Hello and welcome to our Lent midweek moment of reflection uh, here at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. Throughout this season of Lent, we've been living into our theme, uh, Just As I Am, a Journey Towards Wholeness. We have had Lent devotion um, opportunities made available to you daily uh, through a collaborative effort of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America churches here in Eau Claire. Uh, those have been made available in print form as well as on our social media and in our email. Uh, so we hope that you have been able to find time in your daily routine to have a moment of devotion. Again, the theme for that devotion is journey towards wholeness. That in this season of Lent, uh, we journey together as the ELCA folks of Eau Claire and beyond um, through that devotion opportunities. And our theme here for Lent is just as I am. That we come to these moments of devotion and these times of reflection as who God made us to be. And as we go about this, uh, we are using the, the verse, Psalm 46, verse 10, as our guiding verse. Be still and know that I am God. Our first week in Lent, we looked at the words, be still. And what it means for us and the, the difficulty that we have in stillness. And the, difficult, the difficulty we have finding moments of stillness and how in those moments of stillness uh, God finds a way into those empty spaces of our being and makes us whole as people of faith. Our second week uh, we looked at the word and and the power that the word and has in our lives. That and can mean so much more than just a little word in a sentence but it often points to something more. Uh, what else it is that we need to do? What more is to happen to and for us? And today, we look at the word know. Be still and know. So we'll be looking uh, in just a bit at what that word means for us and what it means to know something, what it means to be known, um, and, and how as people of faith, we live into this in our journey towards wholeness. So we are grateful that you are with us for this Lent midweek moment of reflection. And let us begin with a time of prayer. Good and gracious God, uh, we thank you for bringing us to this time and this place for this purpose. That as we pause in the middle of our week, in this journey, in the season of Lent, this journey towards Easter, that we pause to hear your words, to be still and know that you are God. We are challenged today to explore that word know and the power that knowing has in our lives. Be with us as we journey towards wholeness, personal wholeness, familial wholeness, communal wholeness. Wholeness as the body of Christ. God, for that, we give you thanks. Amen. Our guiding practice as we explore Psalm 46, verse 10, is a practice that we did the last time we were in worship together last March. That as we hear this verse recited, we invite you to take a few deep breaths and to try to get to that um, place of quiet in your mind, uh, that, that the distractions are blocked out, and you're able to hear these words and this guided meditation as we hear Psalm 46:10, Be still and know that I am God. So I invite you to take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And in. And out. And in. And out. Be still and know that I am God. And a deep breath in. 
And a deep breath out. Be still and know that I am. Deep breath in and out. Be still and know that I. Deep breath in and out. Be still and know that. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Be still and know. Deep breath in. And out. Be still and deep breath in and out. Be still, deep breath in and out. B. The theme for many of these Lent midweek moments of reflection has become the power that these words and these portions of be still and know that I am God have in our lives. The power of stillness, whether it be a desire to have stillness or a desire to escape it. And the power of the word and and all that comes with it because it always leads to something more. Today is no different as we explore the next word in this verse. Be still and know. I remember in elementary school, at Roselawn Elementary in Chatek, Wisconsin, the, it seemed like the day that all of the banners went up around the building telling us, students, that knowledge is power. And as I've thought about this word for today, to know, be still and know, I've thought about those banners that seemed to be like e around every corner of the building you'd find again, plastered there on the wall, knowledge is power. To know has a lot of power in our lives. When we know something, it's a tool. That, that we can use, that if I know something and I'm in an argument or a debate or in a discussion and I have knowledge of this thing, I have that in my back pocket and I can take it out and I can use it and I can win. If I don't know something, I feel powerless. If I know something about someone else, I may have power over them. If someone knows something about me, they may have that power over me. There is extreme power in knowing. It's important what we 
do with that? We were just in our um, Bible study with our Bible study group, and our gospel text for this Sunday is John 3, starting with the 14th verse. And many of you, maybe not all, are probably immediately hearing John 3, probably said 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And, and Jesus, in that gospel text, is talking to Nicodemus, who has some things about him that he probably would rather people not know. And Jesus is saying to him, Nick, God loved the whole world, including you. Here at Good Shepherd, our mission statement is Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd, your neighborhood church where each is known, seen, and loved. As a church, what does it mean to know people? What does it mean that at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd, each is known? As we think about ourselves, and this was likely the struggle that Nicodemus had, is is. We know that we have stories. We know that we have baggage. We know that we have reasons. The things that people could know about us could very well tell them we shouldn't be loved. That in hearing, for God so loved the world and everything that came with it, we hear that we and everything that comes with us are loved. As a church, we are saying that We know you come with stories that make you who you are. And as a church, we want you to know that you are known, no matter what. This is a calling that that God calls us into in John 3, 16 and the story around it. That it would be so much easier if the things about us could be kept in the dark. That's how it was for Nicodemus. That, that they had this conversation. Jesus and Nicodemus had this conversation under the cover of night. That those who live in the darkness, the things about them won't be seen. Life is easier. Life is easier living in that area of unknown. That while we might think that we are pretty lovable, huggable people, we know there are things about us that would make others turn away. We know that we look to other people and think, wow, this this unconditional love that I hear about from this God character is for that person too. Does God know their story? Does God know what and who God is loving when God says God has unconditional love for God's people? And that question about others is rooted in knowing about ourselves. We don't want to admit it. We don't want to say, my uneasiness with God loving you is that God also loves me. But it's true. We know ourselves. And so often, the things that we think could keep someone from loving us overpower the fact that God doesn't care. God cares. God wants us to know those things. But God loves us. Those things do not keep God and Jesus Christ from loving us. And they call us into loving our neighbor. They call us into looking at that person that we think, is John 3.16 really about that person? And the answer is yes. That in this midweek Lent journey towards wholeness, this season of our lives where, where we are journeying to the cross and the new life that is Christ Jesus raised from the dead, that as we are on this journey towards wholeness, we are made whole whole in hearing that God loves those things we'd rather people not know about. That God knows those things that we think disqualify us and says, you are my child and you are loved no matter what. We were created in God's image. 
We were created with the grace of Christ on a cross in mind. And our mistakes and the things we do that think we think disqualify us in mind. Grace is receiving those things we don't think we deserve. Mercy is not receiving those things we think we do. That in knowing every fiber of our inner being, God said, this is my child. This is my beloved. This person, this child of God is worthy of my love, no matter what. Thanks be to God. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.